Hello, hello, hello. Hi, TMFA. It's Technique Tuesday. How's everybody doing? Um, it is I, uh, yet again, Dialect Coach Chris Lang. I'm here on Technique Tuesday, and um, I am here to answer your accent questions. So uh, anybody who's out there on TMFA right now, come one, come all. It's accent Q&A time. Um, definitely am interested in helping you guys out. So any questions at all that you have about accents, accent training, accents in your career, accents in your manager and your agent, anything like that, your auditioning, voiceover, character voices, how to how to level up your career with accents, anything at all like that, um, now is the time during this Q&A. Um, in fact, every single one of my Facebook Lives on Technique Tuesday is a question and answer period. Um, I'd like to open it up to you guys. Ultimately, you, the actors, are the ones who are going to run into uh, this in your career. And so you guys are the ones who are going to have questions about your accents and how to do accents, how to use accents, how to be an accent actor. And because it is uh, you, then I want to open it up to you guys. I don't just want to be here telling you guys uh, from on high uh, all the information. I want you guys to spark a conversation. This is a conversation, so bring it on, my friends. I would love uh, to hear what your questions are, and I would love to hear, uh, you know, what's going on with you guys right now. Hope everybody is doing well this week. Um, after what I think was a pretty stressful week for most people last week. Um, so I hope everyone's doing doing better this week and uh, is able to, you know, breathe easy um, and, uh, and with an eye on the future now. So um, in addition to uh, your questions, please do say hello. I want to know that you're here. I want to know who's watching this. And, um, you know, want to make sure that, again, whatever you have on your mind, I want to be uh, able to answer your questions and, uh, and and chat with you a little bit on this Tuesday. These should be conversations, my friends, right? So, um, what do we have here? Uh, who's in the comments so far? Evan J. Mackey. Evan, my brother, how you doing? Hope you're doing well today. Um, Ali Riyadh, hi. How, how's, how's, uh, how's life going for you? Uh, and Dante Carroll, once again, Hello. And Teresa Suarez Grosso has a question. This is a great question, by the way, my friends. And you all, like, th this is one of the best questions. Um, and I get asked this question a ton. So Teresa asks, what's the, quote, average length of time it, pick it takes to pick up a new accent for a new role if it's one you haven't done before? Teresa, that's, that, again, a fantastic question. So <clears throat> it depends. Ah, ah, ah. Like, that is the sort of default answer I give to most questions in this vein. Um, but really, it does depend because every actor is very different. Every actor is a very different process. Every actor comes with a different skill set and skill level um, with, uh, you know, uh, when approaching an accent for a role or just in general for their career. And so it's, it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. Um, but I will tell you this. If you, Teresa, for instance, let's say that you were an actor of mine and you and I had been working together, you had taken my accent skills workshop, so you had a good foundation of skills. You and I had worked on, let's say, one or two accents subsequent to that in private sessions and we would honed your skills through that process. It's likely that depending on the size of the role that you're learning the accent for, we're probably into... Uh, you know, a number of weeks, I would say 12 ish weeks, depending on how often we're working together. Teresa, if you got hired, let's say there's a, a big feature film that you were hired for and you were hired uh, for this film uh, and it was a lead. All right. And you let's say it's a, you know, 175 page script. And of those 175 pages, you are in a hundred and 30 of them, okay? So you're in 130 pages. Let's imagine that of those 130 pages, um, you know, let's say that that's an hour and a half. Let's say that that's 90 minutes of film time that you're in, all right? That's what it took to do that 100, let's say 130 pages, a minute per page on average. All right, let's say that's that. Um, so that's 130 minutes, 130 minutes, and uh, there are 60 seconds in every minute. All right, so we're talking 7,800 seconds of film to prep you for. 
all right? And we're talking 24 frames per second. That's 187,200 frames of film that we have to prep you for, all right? So all, let's face it, most of it you're going to be talking. Not all of it, but most of it you will. And so that's a lot of film that we need to prep you for. So in those cases, let's say that uh, we were working on an accent. Let me just check in with the questions here. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So Teresa says this. I already, she says, I already speak Spanish and some French. And she did, by the way. I'm just, so Teresa did take my, my skills workshop, um, but she didn't finish with the office hours. Come, you've got, a, you've got office hours to use, Teresa. Now is the time. So, um, but let's say that you had worked with me subsequently on a couple of accents, and then we had to prep you for a major feature film. It's likely that that's going to take at least three months of us working really, really consistently together. Um, Probably more than once a week, probably two, two, three times a week if we could, um, those sorts of things. But if you just want to pick up a new accent, just know this, every subsequent accent that you look to learn is probably going to take less time just because you're getting better and better and better at that process. So I usually tell new clients who are looking to learn an accent, let's start with this idea of about 12-ish sessions once you have finished the skills workshop. Once you've done that, all right, let's think about 12-ish um, so could it be eight? Yeah, totally. Could it be six? Yeah, it could be. Is it likely that it could be 12 or 14 or 24 or 48 sessions? It's just as likely, frankly, maybe not 48, but it's just as likely it's going to take extra time as it won't. So you just want to prepare your mind for it to take as much time as it's going to take. So I would say at least 12-ish sessions. Probably more than that, the more dialogue you have. If it's a small role, less dialogue to prepare. If it's a big role, much more dialogue to prepare. Because learning the accent itself, my friends, actually won't take that long once you have the skills. You're going to know all about the accent, the sounds, the prosody, the posture, the stuff. The thing that takes the most time is accent identity integration. Taking that identity we craft for the accent and whew, putting it inside this human being and making sure that every single syllable or utterance that you make in that script or anything, all right, is fully integrated and you, you are able to own it like a native speaker. Your brain is processing that language and that speech like a native speaker. That's the thing that takes the most time. And that's the thing that we cannot cheat, especially on a big performance, because there's, you know, more opportunities for it to fall away and for, you know, just for us to hit speed bumps in your performance and things like that. So I think it is really, really important uh, for us to take adequate time. Now, production is famous for not giving actors enough time to prepare. So just know that the more prepared you are with accent skill coming into it, the less that's going to harm you if they don't give you quite enough time to prep everything. Um, so the more prepared you are in that way. So Teresa, yes, I can't believe I, yeah, of course you've taken my skills workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Come finish those office hours. Come finish your office hours. Come start some private sessions. It's time to level up Teresa. You've got the skill. Let's do something with that skill. I'm excited now. You got me pumped up. All right. What else do we have here? Any other questions we've got? My friends, Ali Riyad says, I want to learn a Western accent. Okay. Which one? Aha. <laughs> okay. Um, and Dante says, I can do a little Southern accent. Which one? Yeah. So I hear this stuff a lot, my friends. Western accent, Southern accent, these kinds of things. Um, this is, you know, it's, it's fairly normal in the business to hear these things. We need you to do the Southern accent. We need all of this. But ultimately, it's your responsibility as an actor to know what level of detail you're bringing to the party. Right? What level of detail? All right? So it's not just a southern accent. It's going to be a southern accent from a specific place, a time, a people, an area. And the script will tell you these things most of the time. Sometimes it won't. But most of the time, the script is going to tell you all of that information. So it's, uh, it's incumbent upon you to be more specific. All right? Because now just having a, quote, southern accent isn't enough. If the play is if the if the film or television or play if it's set in West Texas, it's gonna need to sound like West Texas. If it's set in you know uh, New Orleans Garden District, boy, it's gonna have to sound like that. 
if it's set in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to need to sound like it's from that specific place. And there's enough diversity in Southern accents that native speakers are going to know, and they're gonna, you're going to get blown up on Twitter. And nobody wants that, right? Because it's our job to be authentic so we can honor the stories of the people whose accents we're doing. All right, we want to be authentic for them. Um, all right, some more stuff here. All right, Clay Powell. Hi, Clay. How, how's life going for you, Clay? Um, after some training, what daily routines, methods, and or techniques can we use to work on accent? Great question. Okay. If you train with me, I'm going to give you tons of exercises that essentially create a daily practice for yourself to stay honed because it's just like anything else. These are muscles. They've got to stay in shape. And if we don't work them out, it goes away. It absolutely will go away. And you will lose your sharpness. You'll lose your edge in terms of being able to you know, go right into an accent if you want, to be able to leap into an accent process if you'd like. So Clay, yeah, that's what I would say. If you, if you train with me, there's going to be, uh, you're going to have a daily voice practice in terms of warm up, you're making sure this thing is flexible. You're going to have uh, pieces that you've been working on with your accents. You're going to stay in training with accents because I'm going to ask you for every acting class that you do to work on your accents in those acting classes. You're going to, all of my clients here on TMFA on Monologue Mondays, guess what they do? <laughs> accent monologues, right? So these are ways for you to stay in practice, keep your skills honed so that when your agent manager calls you for that accent audition, especially the one you already have, you're ready to go. But if they call you for the one that you don't have, the skills are sharp. So when you call me, we're ready to go and prep you for that audition for tomorrow or two days from now or whenever it is that short turnaround. So Clay, that's a fantastic question. Thank you for that. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm loving the chat here, my friends. This is great. <laughs> Evan says, I'm going to do a kick-ass Southern accent like I was born into it. It's almost like you were, Evan. Yeah, that Georgia accent. I love that Georgia accent. It's fantastic, right? Teresa says, so many different regional accents just in American English. This is one of the reasons I love being an accent coach. Every human being speaks with an accent. And every human being's got a different version of the accent that they do from wherever the place is that they're from and all the other information that compiles and creates accent. So every, uh, all of us have our preferred accent and it's such a diverse thing, right? Um, man, this is, it's just, it's so much fun because there's so many different kinds of stories we get to tell. The diversity of storytelling is huge. It's one of the things I love about Hollywood right now is that our diversity of storytelling has expanded. So we got a lot more stories for you know, Asians and Latinos and, and people of color in general, women. And like it, it's, it's great. It's freaking fantastic. And we love it. And we want to keep more of it going on. Um, let's see here. Any other questions? All right, guys. Um, I didn't see any other questions, but if you have other questions, pop them in the comments below. I definitely want to answer your questions. Um, so throw them in there. Um, there's another thing that I wanted to do today. So we've been working for the last few weeks on the five floodgates for accent freedom. So we've been through the muscles of the neck and throat. We've been through the jaw, those muscles, the lips. We've been through the tongue. And today we get to the last one. And then, by the way, once we do this, I actually have uh, uh, something to pitch to you all. Um, I am definitely going to have a guest on next week. And I'm going to tell you all about who that is once I get to the end here. So don't leave, because you'll want to know who my special guest is for next Tech Week Tuesday. Um, so we're going to talk about that fifth and final uh, floodgate for accent freedom. Essentially, some musculature that we want to make sure is free and open, because loose muscles are flexible muscles. Tight muscles are slow muscles. And we want nice flexibility in our vocal anatomy. So we'll work on soft palate uvula here. Um, <clears throat> I love this. Evan says, you know what, Chris? I finally have learned to love my preferred accent. Mm, victory. I still tell myself every day, I love my Georgia accent. And I love your Georgia accent, too. <clears throat> it's, it's such a marketable skill, man. That accent's going to get you work. You're going to get work using it. A lot of work using it. So we want to make sure it's there. But we want to modulate it sometimes for the story. And we want to add to it for sure. Um, all right. So the uvula, my friends. Now... I didn't join via Zoom, so I can't easily share my screen, but I, ver I have this, all right? This very special picture that I drew of the vocal anatomy, 
All right, so we've been through the lips here. We've been through the tongue and all of that. All right, and we're moving back here. This area here, right, we're now into the soft palate and uvula, okay? Now, this can be difficult for y'all. And I said y'all, all right? Shout out to my southern friends. It can be difficult for y'all because the soft palate and uvula are all the way in the back here. And so sometimes it's harder for us to feel these pieces of our anatomy can be very difficult in a lot of cases, all right? Um, but not impossible. It is doable, my friends. All right, so the soft palate and uvula, let's work on how to feel these things. The easiest way to feel um, all of this stuff is to start moving it in ways that you usually move the, these pieces of your anatomy, and then I can say, that's what you felt just there. That thing, that's the soft palate, that's the uvula. And Clay asks, hey Chris, when you have a moment or near the end, can you do a quick review of your six week beginners course? Absolutely, I'll be happy to do that. Let's get through the uvula and soft palate first, and then remind me in the comments again, and I'll, I'll dive in, I'll give you a quick overview of what that six week beginning accent skills workshop is. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, cool. <laughs> and by review, I mean offer. Definitely, I can do a quick offer for sure. <laughs> read my mind, Clay, read my mind. All right, friends. So, soft pout and uvula. Easiest way to feel this soft pout. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, 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 did I make you yawn? I hope I did. Go ahead and yawn with me. Oh. Now, as you yawn, did you feel something stretch open in the back of your mouth? Did you feel something like lift up? If you did, that, my friends, is the soft palate raising up. Okay, raising up as we yawn. Yeah. Feel it again. Very nice. Okay. Now, another way to feel your soft palate, all right, if you could do your best, like, bad opera singer impression. All right, this kind of opera singer voice, right? If, if you were doing a character voice in a piece of animation who is an opera singer, all right, if you did your best opera singer voice and you lift it, well, what you do here is you're lifting that soft palate up, all right? And you're, you're essentially blocking all the air coming out through your, through your nose here. You're blocking that. You're sending it all out through the mouth instead. The reason we can test this is I can plug my nose and my voice has not changed. All right, that's the soft power in action up. Let's pretend now that you're in a voiceover studio and they said, hey, can you do like a little wormy, you know, villainy kind of goblin voice and, and so you, you did one of these things where you're trying to make your voice really nasal. Can you try to make your voice nasal and say, hi, my voice is nasal. Just to try to do that at home, right? Try to do that with me. Say, hi, my voice is nasal. I'm Chris and my voice is nasal, all right? What have I done there? I've actually taken this soft palate and I've pressed it down to send more air out and through the nose as opposed to through the mouth. So you actually have the ability to press your soft palate up and down. So everybody do opera singer and, and just say... Uh, uh, give yourself a Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And so I forget how the rest of it goes, but then we can go here and we can start over again and say, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Oh. So you actually have the ability to move your soft palate up and down, as it turns out. Now, the little dangly doodad on the end here, the uvula, which I can show you mine here because I've got a big mouth and you can see it. See that little punching bag guy? All right, that's the uvula, All right? When you see a cartoon and they yawn and there's that little punching bag in the back of their mouth, that, that guy, that's the uvula that they've drawn in there in the cartoon. This is connected to the soft palate, kind of like this. Soft palate, uvula. All right, they're connected, but the uvula can move kind of independently a little bit on this. All right, but we're going to treat them as if they're one unit for the purposes of this floodgate discussion. All right, now here's what we want to do everybody is going to do this quick exercise. 
All right, this is my favorite exercise to stretch these muscles and to get them engaged. All right, everybody, and I'm gonna get, I'm dipping into my colors, everybody. It's getting exciting. I'm gonna dip into my colors here. All right, I'm gonna use this beautiful shade here. All right, everybody, make this sound. All right, now, some of you, to some of you, this is the letter K. All right. To those of you who have taken my workshop and have some phonetics, this is a symbol for the voiceless velar plosive. All right? Makes a sound not unlike this. K, k, k. So go ahead and do that for yourself. Go. K, k, k. And put your hand in front of your mouth. K, k, k. You feel a little puff of air on your fingers there? All right, that means air is actively leaving your body from your lungs. This is what we call an egressive flow of air. All right, egressive. And we're doing that with this. All right, now close your eyes. Close them. Three, two, one, closed. Listen to my voice with your eyes closed now. Make that same sound. I want you to feel in the back of your mouth what is touching to make this sound. K, k, k. There's a piece of your tongue k, k, and your soft palate. K. It's actually this back part here, this is called the back of the dorsum, and your soft palate here. Both of these things are touching. All right, they're coming together, they're blocking the air, and that air is going as it escapes. There's a little explosion of air there. All right. Now air is leaving our body in this case. What if, what if we did this same thing here, but the air was entering our body instead? So that means these two pieces of our anatomy have to be touching and then we inhale and so we can actually make this same sound on an inhalation, what we call an ingressive flow of air. So we can go on an exhale, we can go and then we can inhale and go. So try both of those. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale. All right. Now, the pieces of your anatomy that are touching are the same. All right. It's just what direction is the air flowing? All right. Now, if you have trouble with this or you need some clarification, pop it in the comments so I can help you out here. But for now, I'll just assume everybody's got this. All right. <coughs> so, <coughs> and as I die, because I just inhaled some saliva. All right. I promise I won't die during a Facebook Live. If I do, everybody call 911 and then you'll have a great story to tell. I was there when Chris died in his Facebook Live from inhaling saliva. It was awful, but, you know, what a cool story. Anyway. Ah, all right, ready to not die today. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is the exercise. We are going to exhale, all right, that egressive flow and make, and then we are going to inhale that ingressive flow and make that same sound. And as we do that, because these guys have sprung open, we're going to stretch these things open as far as possible. So I'm going to lift up that soft palate in uvula, just like I did on this when I did my opera singer voice, okay? That character voice, just like we did. So we're going to exhale and then inhale. All right, and I'm going to count for you the stretch here. So let me demonstrate, and then you can do it with me. Here's the exercise. So I go, all the air is left, and then I go, And my goal is to stretch that soft out as open as possible. And so you should feel somewhere in here, all right? That's where you should feel a stretch. As the soft palate lifts and opens up, you should feel this stretch, just like when you're stretching your hamstrings or this or anything else that you stretch. You should feel that stretch as it opens up, okay? So we're gonna do this five times in a row, all right? Now, 
watch what my tongue is doing as well as I stretch. It's going to go, I'm actually actively trying to depress my tongue to get it as far away from the soft palate as possible to increase this stretch. Okay, I want to increase that stretch. So everybody do this with me five times. I will count it out. Here we go. Time number one. And... All right, everybody lift up that upper lip. It opens up that space. Here we go. And then reward yourself with an actual yawn. Oh, it feels good, makes my eyes water. Tears of joy. Oh, yeah. Nice yawn and stretch. Ooh. And then take a second and let your lips just touch. All right, let your tongue be low. But can you feel a difference back here in terms of space now? Feel anything different? Mm. You may indeed feel something different. Ah. Okay. Now, my challenge to you is... If you do this floodgate thing in sequence, muscles of the neck and throat, the jaw, the lips, the tongue, and then the soft palate, just like we did with the uvula, huh, what do you think your instrument's going to be capable of? What do you think it will be capable of? We have now prepared it for action. It's ready to go into battle. It's ready to hop out on the field and play. It's ready. It's ready to go. I've often said, and this is true, learning an accent is as difficult as learning martial arts. And I think it's actually more difficult because all of this stuff that we're changing and growing and molding and shaping has to be able to do speech and expression and carry your acting and meaning, whereas martial arts doesn't. Okay, maybe the stakes are higher in terms of physical, you know, <laughs> getting your teeth knocked out or getting a black eye and those sorts of things. But nonetheless, my friends, it is just as physically engaged. All right. So what we want to be able to do is have this instrument be ready to go. So, yes, and Dante absolutely is it finally be able to do a Southern Georgia accent. Yeah, we, you know, with this vocal instrument ready, we can start learning how to be aware and flexible with this instrument so we can alter it and change what you do in your preferred accent to the target accent. But until we have flexibility and control of this, you're just kind of hopelessly bound by your own physical vocal habits of speech and your own accent. And these are not bad habits. Don't get me wrong. These are wonderful habits. I am really grateful my body has habits. I'm so thankful I didn't have to remember to digest my food today. Because my body did it for me. Wonderful habit. Right? I didn't have to remember how to write. Because my body just remembered how to do that. I didn't have to remember that. Right? But these habits, boy, do we need to change them if we want to do accents. We just have to be able to be flexible. And we can always go back to our habits, but we need to be able to leave them. So Dante, absolutely. Southern Georgia accent is well within your reach. Come to me. Let's learn this together. I want to teach you how to do this stuff. Right? If you're passionate about it, so am I. I'm going to be on Team Dante. Foam fingers, confetti cannon, my pom-poms, the whole thing. I'm there on the sideline cheering. All right? Um, so, guys, I, I can't say this enough. You have to practice this stuff. If you don't work on these five floodgates all the time... The, the go away that it's not going to be useful for you to do this once a week you have to do these exercises enough so that when you don't do them you're like Ugh, something's weird it's, it's it's like when you didn't brush your teeth right <laughs> got up hung over and like you didn't brush your teeth, and you're like man something oh i should brush my teeth right and then you feel like a little more normal in the world these exercises need to be like that for you you've got to have your daily practice in you know, I don't know how many of you do meditation or mindfulness practices. I don't know how many of you do, you know, other, you, know, you work out every day. 
You know, you at the gym every day, do you lift, do you do your cardio, make sure that your body is ready to go. This is a part of your body that's got to be ready to go as well. So please, 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 my friends, make this a priority for yourselves. The thing that distinguishes good actors from the exceptional actors is this. A dedication to this kind of technique. And if you want to be one of the exceptional actors, it's a powerhouse accent actor, all right, like all the award winners today, this is part of it. All right, Meryl Streep just doesn't roll out of bed and is able to do accents. It's because this is a part of her life. All right, knowing her vocal instrument is a part of her life. Yeah, works this way. And it's, it's attainable, my friends. This is a skill that you can learn. And I want to teach these skills to you. I want you guys to learn these skills and have them at your beck and call. I don't want you guys to ever be called by your agent or manager and go, oh, shit, I hope I, I, hope I can do that accent. Ew, I wish. Oh, I don't know. Right? Um, you don't want to be in that position, man. You, you want to be in a position where you have skill, confidence, technique, humility to know that, yeah, I can do this. I just need to put in the work. Right? That is my dream for all of my actors, especially here on TMFA. You guys are the hungriest actors I know. All right? Wendy has created a wonderful place here for hungry, passionate actors to come and really get there. Really get there. All right? So now is the time. Let's make this happen for y'all. Um, let's see if there's any questions here. Um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. Dante, I gotta say I love this comment. I'm starting to get used to, used to my voice. Darren said I got charm. Darren's not wrong. Darren Warren, fabulous acting teacher, wonderful coach, wonderful human being, very generous artist, passionate, knows what's up. All right? <clears throat> and you've got charm. If you've got charm, that means we need to lean into that. Where does that come from? How do we open that up in your instrument more? How do we gain more of that through accents? We expand it. Different kinds of charm now in different accents. That's the way to go. <clears throat> we love this. Um, Dante also says, just started meditating. Yeah, this is good. This is daily practice along with some tongue and jaw stretches. I want you to add the jaw, the neck and throat. Got to do that first. Do the, the muscles of the neck and throat. Go review my Facebook Live if you need to because it's there for you. I leave these on so you guys have access to them. All right. So the neck and throat, then the jaw, then the lips, then the tongue, then soft palate and uvula. We've got to go from big muscle groups to the smaller muscles. All right. That's how we want to stack our progress in terms of all of this. But if you do that every day, I guarantee, Dante, you're going to thank yourself. You will see results, tangible results in like a week or two. Um, <laughs> Evan says, God bless you. Now I remember to brush my teeth. Evan, go brush your teeth. You knew something was wrong today. You knew it. <laughs> this is what it is. Go brush your teeth. But do it with the other hand than you usually do. Do it with the other hand than you usually do. Build a little extra dexterity and flexibility in your physical and mental instrument. Um, yeah, Dante, go look back. Go look back and review all the exercises. Um, essentially, I've built for you is a warm-up that you can do for yourself physically. We haven't got to the vocal part. That's for the future. I may take you guys through that. That's a little easier to teach one-on-one -on -one than it is in this, uh, just because not everybody's voice is the same, so I have to tailor the process to you. Um, yeah, go back and look. Um, if you have any questions as well, guys, for, for reals, reach out to me. My website, here, let me put it in the comments. My website, www.dialectcoachchrislang.com. Go to my website. I have a very friendly chat bot. Reach out to me. Send me an email. Ask me any questions. You guys are never bothering me with your questions. I'm here to help. <laughs> Truthfully, I'm here to help. So you're never, ever bothering me with your questions. You're never bothering me if you want to schedule a session, if you want to schedule a free consultation to just talk about how do I get started. You can do that by talking to my very friendly chatbot on my website. He's happy to take your information and give you a link to schedule the free consultation. Um, yeah, Dante, that's good. Go make a saved playlist of all these videos. In fact, everybody, go do that. Make a saved playlist of my Facebook Lives where I walk you through this stuff. Because it's always there on your phone then. If you want me to walk you through that warm-up, I'm there for you, all right? Um, definitely, it's it's useful tool to have. Because you never want to show up not warmed up, for sure. Never want to show up not warmed up. Um, but certainly, I'll just repeat it again. I'm here to help. So if you guys have any questions at all, want anything in terms of where do I go, what do I start doing, how do I do it, show up for sure um, at my website. And just let me know. Yeah, I'm here to help. So Christina. Oh, Christina's here. Hi, Christina. Lol, I already made a playlist. 
<laughs> Christina's just ahead of the game. What can we say? <laughs> Teacher's pet, Christina. I like it. It's fun. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see here. So I made a promise to Clay uh, to walk through my six-week beginning accent skills workshop and what you're going to learn in that. Um, and by the way, Clay, um, I would talk to both Therese and Evan, who've both taken the workshop, and they're here in the chat. Ask them any questions, and they'll tell you what it was like to take it and, and all of that. Um, so let's see here. Um, yeah, absolutely, Clay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a free consultation. This is. I want to make sure that you guys get the get the help you need. So that that's that's why this uh, this exists. Um, let's see. Teresa's got this is awesome cool okay so Clay I'm going to address Teresa's and then I'll, I'll go right into this the skills workshop so Teresa says this is more about mouth control not a specific accent if it can be addressed okay in terms of mouth control I feel like I can control plosives pretty well I get some sibilance in Spanish but what drives me absolutely nuts is hearing mouth clicks in recordings and self tapes, etc., whether my own or others. Happens regardless of what voice or accent I'm doing. Other than the hydration, what helps reduce or eliminate that? So mouth clicks, essentially extraneous sounds that come from what we're hearing. So um, Teresa, as a graduate of the Accent Skills Workshop, I'm going to point you back to session number five and six. Those are the biggest things are, that are going to point you in the direction of success in this. So in session five, you're going to spend a lot of time going through how do we use our vocal anatomy to obstruct the flow of air and sound as it's coming out of our body. Essentially, consonants. As you become more and more skilled in terms of your ability to be precise and dexterous, inside your mouth with those consonants, the less and less extraneous movement we're gonna have. Typically, extra mouth sounds in recordings come from extra excess movements that have nothing to do with the actual articulation of speech, all right? Obviously, hydration helps because we're hearing maybe some little gross mucusy stickiness in there. All right, saliva becomes a little more viscous, and so our, our mouth parts stick together, and we hear, we hear a little separation of those sorts of things. Like when a suction cup goes and it pops off, we hear those kinds of noises. So hydration is key, all right? But you can also look at, you know, before recording, one of the things that's very useful is to have just a little bit of sugar in there as well. It just kind of lubricates things a little more. So frankly, eating an apple, an apple's got great hydration. It's got a little bit of sugar in there. It's it's not super saccharine or anything. So like, just take a bite of an apple before you do a take. That's one great way to do it. Um, you know, uh, obviously, you know, tea with honey and lemon, all these old, old tricks, things like that. One thing I can recommend to help lubricate is Manuka honey, all right? It's expensive. Jar will probably cost you in the realm of 30 or 40 bucks, but that's a great way to lubricate everything. It's also antibacterial and very, very tasty. Um, you can just take it by the spoonful. I don't recommend putting it in tea or other liquids. It dilutes it too much, uh, but it's certainly a really, really good substitute for that. So, Teresa, it is about more control. So if you want more control, then you've got to practice more. So go from that fifth session, which is all the consonants, into putting it together with the free flow omnish. If you want to know what omnish is, take the course, my friends. So that free flow omnish. If you can do omnish really clearly and succinctly and with a lot of precision, all right, that's what's going to help you do this in Spanish or English or French, whatever, whatever other languages you are finding this in. So that's probably the biggest thing. If you still continue to struggle with it, Teresa, come work with me. Let's, uh, let's uh, set up a plan to, uh, to work through that together so I can help you out. Um, okay, Clay, now comes to you. I know you've waited patiently. Thank you for your patience. So the Beginning Accent Skills Workshop, like I said, you can talk to Teresa and you can talk to Evan. <coughs> Pardon me. Both of them have taken the workshop. Um, what you're going to go through is essentially it's six sessions. Um, it, because it's online and on demand, when I teach it live, I try to teach it in about six weeks. But I've set it up so that it can take as much as eight or ten if you want to take that long. Because there's just some sessions in it that maybe you want to spend more time to master. And because it's online and on demand, you can take your time going through it. 
Um, so what are you going to learn? All right, four basic things I'm going to take you through. Awareness, flexibility and mechanical control, coordination and flow, accent identity integration. Those four things I'm going to take you through. All right, so, so awareness of what? Your accent to start with. We've got to know where we're starting with so that we can get from there to a target accent when we want to. All right, so your accent, we've got to be aware of vocal anatomy. We've got to be aware of thinking and perspectives related to accents. We move from there into flexibility. So we have to learn now what to do with that vocal anatomy. We have to train it. It's got to go to the gym. We have to take all these muscles in here to the gym, train them. We've got to learn how to use them, how they can move. And more importantly, once they can move, what that feels like so that you can recreate those physical things time after time after time for different accents. All right, then once we, do, once we get that level of skill, we have to put that together into a sense of flow and coordination, something resembling speech, in fact. All right, and then once we have that flow, can we integrate an actual human identity, yours or your target accent's identity, into that so that you have a viable pathway of, for communication that can carry all of your acting the way you want it to. Um, so these are the skills that apply to every accent on the face of the planet. You're going to learn how to do all the accents. All right. There's not going to be an accent that you won't know how to approach with these skills. It's the biggest thing. All right. Um, <clears throat> it can feel, you know, a little bit foundational, but that's because it is. All right. If learning accents is harder, frankly, than learning martial arts, I would say it's about as hard, and I come at this from my mother was a dancer uh, when I was growing up, ballet and modern, and in college I was a ballet and modern dancer. So like having this dance background, I can tell you, learning accents and learning ballet are about as hard as, in my opinion, all right? But there's a reason dancers go to bar class, all right? They go to that foundational bar class every single day, because if those foundations aren't there, they can't do the egregiously difficult technique. They can't. It's not there for them. So these skills exist for us to be able to have them at our beck and call. So when somebody calls you and says, we need that Afrikaans accent in two days, and you have to learn it in two days for that audition, it's there. you got it. And you've got confidence in it. And you can put all your effort into the acting and be a badass actor like I know you want to be. All right? So that's what you're going to get in the skills workshop. The only downside right now to the skills workshop is that it's online and on demand, which is both a benefit, but it's just me in a recording talking to you. So unlike this, you don't get to ask me questions in real time. So I've set up my office hours to go along with it. This is a pack of six 20-minute private sessions that you'll buy in addition to the workshop. And that will um, that, that way, when you're in the workshop, once a week, you and I get to meet. We're going to meet privately and work on a piece of technique or skill or question or something, anything that we need to talk about. I, I want to be able to be available for you to tailor the process to you and your instrument specifically. So that way, then, once we get to the end of that process and you say, great, now let's move into private sessions together, then we're a little further ahead of the game. And frankly, you've been much more friendly to your budget this way as well. All right. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, that's what the Accent Skills Workshop is. I'm going to address your question that you wrote down, Clay, but if you have any other questions, pop them in. Let me know what I need to address that you'd like to know more about. Okay. Um, so Clay asks, your thoughts on warm versus cold water for another voiceover coach reference that cold water is bad for vocals. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just not necessarily good for them. Cold water uh, is, you know, like when you strain a muscle or something, you ice that thing. So the cold actually helps to shrink swelling. So if you do have some swelling in the vocal folds, super cold water can help for that. But again, um, this is very delicate stuff inside here. The vocal folds are easy to damage and easy to hurt. So you want to take good care of them. So by and large for hydration, <clears throat> tepid water over the course of a day. All right. Gut, like, just like guzzling, you know, taking a liter of water and a minute and a half, that you're going to pee that out with all the salt in your body. You're actually going to flush your electrolytes by doing that. So if you drink more water 
over a longer period of time, you're going to keep more things hydrated. So you have to build a habit of that. And drinking a ton of water just the day before an audition or the day before a studio date, that's not enough to get hydrated. You need to hydrate like the week leading up to. That's how you get enough consistent water in your body to lubricate everything and keep it well. So yeah, cold water is going to be bad right before vocalizing. It's because you shock them into shrinking right shock your vocal folds into shrinking um <clears throat> yeah okay clay yeah he says thanks you're welcome he says my girl has been crushing me about my british and or english irish and scottish are sounding the same shake my head yeah so clay what we do is, is by developing enough skill and technique in here we now have a physical awareness to be able to differentiate between these accents because right now you're trying to remember what it sounded like I'm gonna guess and they're all blending together because they're not distinct enough for your mind and body yet and that's the goal that we have to get to that's my dream for you all right my friends no matter what I come on here and it's you know like I, I have like two things to do and then it's 45 minutes later and like wow I've talked for a long time Guys, I love coming on. I love talking to you. Um, next week, I promised you a special guest, and I will deliver. All right, my special guest next week is going to be my dear friend and colleague, accent coach Jack Wallace. Jack Wallace is um, one of the premier accent coaches in Hollywood. Um, spends a ton of time prepping big actors for auditions and things like that. So he's really, really great at what he does. He's British, all right? Um, and as an Anglophile myself, I can't help but like him. I'm predisposed to think he's awesome. Uh, but he's really funny. He's a great friend of mine. And we're going to come on and we are going to address coaching British accents and American accents. Because as an American, I coach a lot of British accents. And as a Brit, he coaches a lot of American accents as well. But there's often this miss you know, understood thing that as an American, I can only coach American accents. And as a Brit, he can only coach the British accents. Now there's benefits to, you know, going to a British coach for British accents or an American coach for American accents, depending. But we're going to talk about that and everything else. So here's what I'm asking for you guys today. Any questions that you have for me and accent coach Jack Wallace, I want you to create a TMFA question post. All right, and put those questions out on TMFA so that Jack and I can address them. I want you guys to bring all the questions that you have so that Jack and I can talk about them. And, um, you know, we may talk Shakespeare, we may talk all sorts of different stuff. But Jack is a great, great guy, and I think you're going to like, uh, like meeting him. He's here on TMFA already, uh, but I'm going to tag him in a post uh, so everybody knows he's coming. And uh, next week, that will be it. And Christina says, you should both speak in each other's accent that day. We may, in fact, do that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, for sure. <laughs> we've, we've actually done that before, just hanging out. <laughs> just for fun, because accent coaches are crazy people. Um, but definitely, you guys, I want to know what your questions are. So please do TMFA question that thing. Same time next week. Yes, Clay. Same time next week. 3.30 p.m. Pacific. All right, I'm always here that day. If it's not me, if I'm on set or something, I can't be here. I have one of my accent coach colleagues come on and do a Facebook Live for you guys. It usually is Pamela Vanderway, um, who you guys will recognize from TMFA. Um, but next week, like I said, <laughs> accent coach Jack Wallace. And now Christina has double dog dared us to speak in each other's accents. All right, well, listen, challenge accepted. Can't say we'll do it for the whole time. We'll, we'll definitely try to make it happen at some point. But I'm, I'm dead serious. Put your questions in a TMFA question post. Definitely want to see that this week or today or sometime. But in any case, my friends, that's like almost an hour I've talked here. It's enough for today. Um, I think it's time to go get an afternoon cocktail or a glass of wine and, um, you know, catch up on some technique and some emails and things like that. So my friends, as always, much love to you. I love you guys on TMFA. Any questions at all, reach out to me. You've got my website. Clay, if you want to take the Accent Skills Workshop, um, go to the website, schedule a private consult. I'll talk you through it all and we can get you signed up. And in fact, my friends, I didn't mention this, but because it's TMFA, there is a special coupon code that I will offer you for a discount on the Skills Workshop that I only give to TMFA. Nobody else gets this, only on TMFA. So you guys, uh, you guys get it and no one else does. So uh, Clay, come to me. I'll hook you up with that and we'll get you squared away. Uh, as always, I love you all. 
reach out with any of your accent questions. Uh, have a great week. Um, I know COVID stuff is getting a little crazy these days. So guys, please do be safe. Uh, I know a bunch of people who've had it and a couple of people who've not survived. So please, please, please um, stay safe and then um, stay hydrated. If you can get outside, enjoy the outdoors a little bit. It's a bomb to your troubled soul. <coughs> Dante, yeah, eggnog. Um, I make a boozy aged eggnog as well that I've got. It's not quite ready yet, so I can't drink it yet. But yes, if you're into eggnog, please, Dante, have some. Um, all right, everybody. Until next Tuesday, I'll be here with Accent Coach Jack Wallace. I will see you if you're not watching this live. Put all of your questions in the comments. I'll circle back and get them uh, not live. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye now.